Trolls' purses are the mischief, and this was no exception. Air, who are you? It squeaked as it left the pocket. And William turned round at once and grabbed Bilbo by the neck before he could duck behind a tree. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle Earth. Today we will be taking a look at the very few talking or conscious or even somewhat living items in Tolkien's works, as they do stand out as mysterious and sometimes strange in the writings of Tolkien. Sources for today's video are in the description and cards, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. First, the one that most obviously comes to mind, and is the one referenced in the quote at the beginning of this video, is something from the events of The Hobbit. During The Hobbit, Bilbo traveled with Thorin's company in 2941 through the Trollshaws, coming across three trolls, William, Bert, and Tom. In showing, or attempting to show, his prowess as a burglar, the role for which he was selected by Thorne's company, he reached his hand into the pocket of a troll, and would have escaped with its loot, most likely, had a talking purse not given up Bilbo's location to the trolls. Now this, especially on rereads, always stands out as actually something of a strange moment for me in Middle-earth. It is one with a certain charm to it for sure, but one of a few moments that stands out in The Hobbit book especially as rather strange in Tolkien's works at large. The Lord of the Rings, despite how many powerful objects make appearances in that book, never has something such as this that stands out in such a way. It's quite different from those books and even the rest of The Hobbit. Now, with The Hobbit book, let's not forget that originally it was not necessarily meant to be in the same universe as that which The Silmarillion took place in, despite it having references to a few of the events that were eventually published in The Silmarillion. And of course, The Hobbit was meant to be a rather whimsical children's fantasy book. But in a legendarium that is so well-crafted, where even the smallest objects that are mentioned usually have a fair amount of detail behind them, the Troll's Purse stands out as something that is, or rather could be, strange. However, there are some in-universe explanations for the purse and so forth. The first that we might imagine is that the purse was not a living thing, though it was conscious. Perhaps, if the pocketbook was a real thing that existed in Middle-earth, it maybe was a spirit-bound object, or one that was enchanted, not even unlike the Whites of the Barrowdowns, who were corpses infused with spirits from Angmar. However, I think there is an even more likely explanation. Within The Lord of the Rings, we know that Bilbo, who penned and framed his own adventure as the narrator in There and Back Again, A Hobbit's Tale by Bilbo Baggins, was at times a somewhat unreliable narrator who tried to uphold his own reputation in his writings, like how he kind of changed the details about how he got the ring. If I were to hazard a guess about the talking coin purse, I would say that even in the land of Middle-earth, as fantastical as it is, it is more likely that such an item never existed, and that instead it was a normal coin purse. But seeing that Bilbo, as a character, has a bit of an ego, and wants to represent himself in a rather heroic way in his own tale, more likely than not, accidentally alerted the trolls of his presence when trying to pickpocket one of them, and he blamed it on a purse that was talking in his frame narrative, rather than his own fault and no other account exists to disprove this. That would be my bet concerning the whole purse thing, especially because nothing becomes of it once the trolls perished in the light of the sun. Perhaps Bilbo even did this just to add another sense of wonder and magic to his journey that wasn't there before, writing it as a tale for other hobbits to come. As for the other known talking item, there is the sword Girthang, which said this to Turin, its wielder. Yea, I will drink thy blood gladly, that so I may forget the blood of Beleg, my master, and the blood of Brandir slain unjustly. I will slay thee swiftly. Girthing was around in the First Age, and broke after saying this in 499 of the First Age. Concerning the Sword of Turin here, we know it was forged in a very special way, as its metal came from a meteorite. We know there was another sword like it, its mate, and we will. While again, it is possible that since it was such a powerful weapon, it had some sort of enchantment allowing it to speak, but again, I also doubt this. Seeing that no other weapon spoke like this in all of Arda, not even Andoril or Narsil or anything like that, not even the Swords of Gondolin, I must imagine that, since the Elves of the First Age likely wrote the tale of Turin to Rambar after it had happened, and they knew that it ended tragically, anthropomorphized the sword in such a way that happens in many tragic legends. 
Since this sword, just like Turin himself, took part in many atrocities and was broken in Turin's final moments, I imagine that the elves added this as a bit of sorrowful rhetoric, befitting the legend of the tale of Turin, heightening the sense of personality and drama in this moment of Gurthang taking Turin's life, and perhaps offering some sort of personified salvation, if not redemption, for the sword that drank the blood of those slain unjustly by Turin with it. Beyond this, there are no mentions of any other item speaking or having consciousness besides, perhaps implicitly, the One Ring. In many instances, the One Ring seems more alive than other objects, having in a way a will of its own, such as when it betrayed Isildur and slid off of his finger in the Anduin, leading him to his death. Since the ring could change its size, it did betray Isildur in a sense. I would say that, while this item was not a talking one, it was a conscious one, but not one of its own volition, rather of the volition of Sauron and his spirit. While of course Sauron could not bind his own consciousness entirely to that of the consciousness he put in the One Ring, otherwise he probably could have found it, it seems likely that since part of his soul or essence was bound up in the One Ring, it made the ring somewhat conscious itself. This is interesting too, because it makes it different from the previous two talking items in the video, which I believe are results of the frame narrative of Middle-earth, but from what I can tell, the One Ring might actually be more conscious in some ways than those are, if those are just simply devices of the frame narrative. However, from as far as I can find, those are all of the talking and or conscious items of Middle-earth. Let me know your thoughts on these, and if my guesses regarding their nature seem to be right or not. And so, my friends, we come to the end of our tale. From this tale, we remember a simple truth. We must always ponder and question, for reality may be different than it seems. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on these items? Let me know in the comments below. Even if I am wrong, I love the nature of these small inclusions of items. They really amplify the parts of the story that they're in. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Weta or United Cutlery Lord of the Rings swords, statues, and other replicas from Castle Khan, who does international shipping and use the code WEST at checkout, and please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Merton, John Hume, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswald Project, Theodore, Moon Viper, Andrew Carlisle, and Zumi. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Your support means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on King Helm Hammerhand of Rohan. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.